Hello everyone, I'm Phil Rowley and welcome to my fly tying bench. If you watch my Joes vs. Pros Lake Whitefish Edition, you are introduced to my buddy Ryan's Orion, a simple black and red coronami pupa that really produces. Join me at the bench and I'll show you how to tie this simple fly. If you like this video, please give it a like. If you enjoy the channel, please subscribe and if you want to be notified of future videos, just hit that bell and you'll get notification. So let's go and I'll show you how to tie this great little fly. My good friend Ryan first introduced me to his variation of a traditional black and red coronamid pattern when we filmed our Joes vs. Pros Lake Whitefish edition. His addition of a fluorescent chartreuse bead makes this a deadly pattern. Here are the materials you'll need to add a few Orions to your fly box. Okay, so let's tie the Orion. If you watched my Joes vs. Pros Lake Whitefish, you saw this fly in action. Creation, a variation of a basic black and red by my buddy Ryan. We put it to good use and the fly's name became because of that. Oh Ryan. So here we go. We've got a Daiichi 1120 number 10 scud hook into the jaws of the vise. Probably tie this from 10 down through 14. Uh, and then we've got a, a 764 chartreuse bead on here. This is a brass bead. You could certainly use tungsten for a number 10. I'd use a 764 for a 12 or 14, a 330 seconds. And if you wanted to make a size 16 Orion, I would recommend a 564. So we're just going to attach our tying thread, which is a black 70 denier or 80. And we're just going to get that started. I'm going to pull down on the thread and snap that thread forward to break it off. And then carry on down the shank into the bend slightly, usually for my coronamids on a scud hook. If you look at the thread coming off the hook at about a 45 degree angle to the point, that's a great place to stop. And then we'll just bring our thread back up to the rear of the bead and let it hang there. We've got a nice uh, thread base down there to hold, keep our materials in place. For the rib, it's just, as the name says, black and red. So we're going to use some small UTC red wire. This never happens to anybody at home, right? The exploding spools. Um, so we've just taken a length off of that. We're going to place that. Actually, if you stab it into the bead a little bit, it'll help hold it in place. And we're just going to secure that down the shank. And I'm just, if you notice, I'm pulling out on it. And with the tension, it just stays in place right along the side and also acts as a little ramp. So that thread will slide down neatly, one wrap behind the other. We'll place the wire out of the way into the material clip. And then we'll just come forward a little bit. And for the body, you could use black thread, black buzzer wrap. I'm just going to use a couple of strands of black flashaboo. I'm just going to bring this up close into the camera. Lay that flashaboo on either side of the bobbin. There's equal amounts hanging from both sides. I'm just going to grab both strands and now I've doubled it around the barrel of the bobbin, slide it up into position onto the shank. I'm just going to secure that down. And because flashaboo is not the most durable material in the world, we're going to add a little super glue underneath to reinforce it and of course we will be coating the fly after. But right now I'm just going to build up a little bit of taper so with this 70 denier, I can spin the bobbin counterclockwise. That'll floss it up, flatten out the wraps. And I'm just going to build up a taper in the front third of the fly. So I'm just going to eyeball this. And the amount of taper depends on the material you're using. Flash Bruce lays pretty flat, so you can add a little bit more taper. If you're using something like a scud back, uh, which is a thicker material, you'd probably use less. So we've got a little bit of taper there. As most of you know I like my flies pretty skinny, so we're just going to lay a, da a little coat, a brushable super glue on there. You can let it sit for a second and get a little tacky. And then we're just going to take our 
strands of flashaboo and wind them forward, one wrap right in front of the other, being mindful not to strike the hook point because that's kind of hard on flashaboo. I'm just going to wind that forward. We can overlap the wraps a little bit more to further augment that taper. And just wind those wraps right up tight in into the bead. And the beauty of this um, super glue method too is if you slip your grip, there's a pretty good chance that that material won't unwind because the super glue will hold it down. So it's also a trick to use when you're tying pheasant tails and other flies like that with. Um, feather fibers for the body that uh, it'll, it'll stay intact and uh, add some durability. So now all we're going to do is wind, make the, uh, wind the wire forward. So the first couple of times I'm going to take the wire and I'm actually just going to make two or three turns right at the back of the fly to form a little red butt and then I'm just going to come forward now and open that uh, spacing up to, to rib the fly. And the target is always to get um, seven ribs for nine body segments, so there's two, three, four, five, six, seven. Come up, a couple of wraps over top of the wire, a few directly in front, and then just put my thumbnail on that tie-off point, break away the excess, and then we'll build up a little thread thorax. So again, I'm spinning that thread counterclockwise to flatten the wraps. And we're just going to build a nice, even ramp. So don't be in a hurry to make that ramp up to the bead. Go back and forth a few times, a nice, gentle slope on the ramp. If you go too fast, too soon, you'll end up with a steep ramp. And when you go to finish the fly, there's a good chance those thread wraps are just going to tumble. So I like the look of that. Some little fiber in the way there. Not sure what that is. Just being fussy here. And then again we'll spin that counterclockwise, introduce our whip finisher. And remember to try and make straight wraps across so you end up with a nice balanced thorax all around the fly. Sometimes if you go with a kind of a cross wrap like this, you'll end up with a nice thorax on this side and um, a bit of a skinny one on that side. So all we need to do now is a final body coating. And you, again, you could use a super glue. I'm going to use some of the Solaris Bone Dry. And we're just going to give this fly good coating. Like so. Fill in all those gaps. All the way down. Protect that body. And the beauty of these resins, of course, is you've got lots of drying time. You can, if it's too much on there, you can remove it or add more or just roll around the vise like I'm doing right now to just disperse it and when you're happy with it just come in and zap that for 10 seconds or so and that'll that'll cure everything up and it probably doesn't show on camera but that uh, orange sorry that chartreuse bead just pops so that's going to be a magnet so um, we had good luck with this on that Lake Whitefish show and trout like this as well Especially in deeper water, that fluorescent material, fluorescent bead is really going to pop. So there you have it. Just a simple variation of the good old black and red, the Orion. So add a few of these in different sizes to the coronament section of your fly box.